Premiership's back, and it starts with Harlequins getting a six-point win over Sale. It was a... I mean, it was a bit rusty. It's to be expected. The rules have changed the breakdown a bit. Uh, we saw the same thing happen in Super Rugby Aotearoa, a fully blown-out penalty count. It was actually exactly the same. 30 penalties in this game. 30. Same as the Chiefs game against the Highlanders, the opening game of Super Rugby Aotearoa. 30 penalties in that one as well. So, yeah, penalties were the were the story of the day. Two tries in the game and a few penalties. Sale will probably be feeling uh, like if they'd been a bit more cohesive, they probably could have got more out of this, especially seeing as they were two Rob Dupria missed penalties away from at least tying the game. Uh, but for Quinns, they did look a little bit more cohesive and uh, Marcus Smith had the battle of the battle of the tens that is for sure his kicking and just general control of the game was going pretty well um first uh few you know moments of the game were were a bit scrappy like i mentioned like especially for sale like there was a line out throw that went astray mcguigan knocked it on they conceded the first scrum penalty so they were on the wrong side of most of the opening plays and it started raining as well which probably added to some of the handling errors the handling wasn't atrocious given it was wet and it was the first game back um but it wasn't you know it wasn't all that clean especially early on uh quinn's got the first chance at a penalty goal didn't take it opted for a line out from that line out they didn't get much out of it but they did manage to win another penalty which was in a better position smith kicks it three nil kicks another one later on six nil and they're looking pretty good value for their lead they have a water break on 20 minutes it's easy for me to get that it, uh, easy for me to forget that it is summer up where you guys are at in the northern hemisphere uh, so a water break seems like a good idea although it didn't seem to be particularly hot uh, hard to tell on camera what the temperature is um sale got a penalty there on a 22 minutes rob dupria misses it it's a very kickable one uh there were lots of penalties going on uh smith kicks another one for quinn's on 31 minutes to make it nine nil and at that point you feel like they're looking pretty good value for their lead they've had the better of the attacking plays like one play was like cross kick offloads like proper glorious stuff especially in the wet and um earl had a, a big a big run which which could have come to more uh but you know nothing ended up coming of it but it was it was close they'd been they'd been pretty close to sales goal line and you think again they're probably having the better of the game that being said uh marla did get warned by the ref that if he kept using the verbals on on sales guys who he was getting right under their skin that uh that he would be penalized uh we saw that in altero as well we saw tj perinata get told the ref wouldn't talk to him anymore, even though he was co-captain. And in this one, Marla, who wasn't captain, but still getting told if he keeps yapping, he's going to get penalized. So the refs, <clears throat> not big fans of the players talking too much rubbish, but I don't know. You have to have a, a bit of banter anyway. Uh, Sale probably had their best chance in the first half. Right at the end of the first half, they went through a bunch of phases uh, on Quinn's line, but they ended up knocking it on with Tuilangi, who had a relatively quiet game, I would have said. Especially in the first half, he was virtually, I think he had like one or two runs. I think the second run was the knock-on um, over the goal line. But they went back for advantage. A pretty easy penalty for Rob Dupria, and he shanks it again. So that's six points that Sale missed out on the first half. It could have gone into the sheds nine points to six. Final score is only a six-point difference, so, so pretty costly. I don't want to be too hard on him, but... Just the goal kicking is one of the things that even if you're in lockdown, it's an individual skill you should still be able to practice. I remember times in Super Rugby when he played for the Sharks down here that uh, he essentially kicked my team, the Blues, off the park one day. He got like 20-odd points on his own. But he is known for a bit of the inconsistent ones. I'm not sure what he's been like in the Premiership, but he was at his inconsistent best in this one. Uh, Halftime stats. Run meters 195 to 121 in Quinn's favor. Position temperature pretty even. Uh, Harlequins had five knock-ons to one, though, which was a bit concerning. Whereas for, for Sale, it was 12 penalties conceded to Harlequins five, so that was concerning for them. Both sides tackling really well, though. Second half starts. Marcus Smith continues on. Um, you know, great little bit of controlling the, the territory game with a good kick into to Sale territory, especially given the conditions. Uh, but... It was the opening try of the match to sale, actually. McGuigan got the try out on the right wing, and it seemed all a bit too easy. 
after Quinn's like tackling at 90% in that first half, Sale got a line out, went to a more, and then quickly like maybe four passes out to the right, and McGuckin had a bit of work to do, but easy enough for him. And um, he, he goes over for the try. So that's the opening try of the game. And of course, Rob Dupria from the sideline slots it no problem. Like he's been kicking like that all night. But uh, So yeah, nine points to seven. That that lead that Quinns had worked pretty hard to build pretty much evaporates in that, that time. Um, they, they did at one point, Quinns have, like if you're talking about plays of the game, it was a really bizarre one where Quinns were like a five meter line out they went close. Sale get a turnover. Rob Dupria decides to counterattack inside his own 22 cross kick. But Mike Brown from Quinn's intercepts it. Goes really close. Sale's guys kill it on the line and get yellow carded because of that. It's it's bizarre stuff. It's I'm not, I don't mean to be too hard on Rob Dupria, but he just needed to boot it long. The cross kick was probably not first game back and in the wet was probably not the play. Uh, and sure enough, from the resulting penalty, uh, Harlequins are able to get a five-meter line-out going, and then a few phases later, Baldwin goes over for their try. Converted, so they score seven points during the yellow card, and uh, that makes it 16 points to seven, so back to being pretty comfortable for for Quinns. Faf later on kicks it out on the full, so it's not really going sales way. But that being said, after that try, it's like Harlequins kind of took the foot off the gas. They got the extra man, but they seem to be like, like Landajo was kicking for, for territory. They didn't really want to play in their own half. They didn't want to try and push with the extra man. They were just kind of happy to hold on. Uh, McGinty comes on. He kicks the penalty for Sale on 70 minutes. So there's still 10 minutes to go. It's 16-10. It's within one score for Sale if they can get something done. But they can't get something done. So, yeah, they'll be really disappointed. Um... Some people mentioned as well in the comments and in the live stream I did about the, the breakdown changes that really affected Super Rugby Aotearoa for the first few weeks. I would expect we see the same. I think it affected Super Rugby Australia too as the guys get used to it and it maybe teams need to kind of change the way they're looking at things. Definitely Quinns were on the right side of the ref. The final penalty count is 11 by Quinns, which is a lot, but then 19 times Sale were penalized. 19 times. A fair few of those at scrum time. But also at the breakdown, man, 19 times. You can't be you can't be doing that and winning games. Um, match stats, like knock-ons, five by Quinns, four by Sale. Like that's higher than you'd want, but given it's wet, first game back, it's not not terrible. Run meters were pretty much even, 208, 207. Position of territory, Sale edged it with like the mid-50s. Lineouts were, were pretty functional, 19 out of 20 for uh for harlequins sale is 15 out of 17 but you got to wonder like it wasn't always the cleanest ball it was sometimes a bit like they might have won it but not not with a clean platform to do anything on tackling was solid like i said both sides 93 percent for harlequins is proper test match level 88 for sales still very respectable but um quince had to make 84 to sales 52 so they were they were busier on defense rob shaw was the best of them with nine from nine and i thought he did look pretty good overall uh, Rob Dupria for, for sale. Like he did miss those two penalties and he's, his cross kick probably set up Harlequin's try, but he was still their best like run meters guy with 55. Remember they had 207 total. He had 55 run meters. So a quarter of their, their attack went through him. Um, yeah. Eddie Jones was there in the crowd. There was no crowd for this one. Obviously, um, they did have the crowd noises to simulate, you know, attack and defense and whatnot which works better than I've seen in some other sports. Um, like I said, Eddie Jones was there in his mask. One of the medics came on to put some stitches in or something or to put a bandage on, full PPE. So if they are going to keep the competition going, they need to keep everybody safe. So happy for that to go on. They probably should have done it on the sideline for expediency's sake, but uh, they didn't. And um, yeah, got on with the game. So yeah, first game back. A good win for Harlequins. I don't have a Harlequins jersey. If I did, I'd be wearing it. But um, yeah, Sale will be a bit disappointed. They'll need to adapt. They'll need to concede fewer penalties. That is for sure. It'll be interesting to see how the other games go this weekend in terms of the penalty counts, whether this one's a bit of an anomaly. Uh, certainly the first two weeks of Super Rugby Aotearoa, which I don't mean to keep harping on about, but they were really high in penalty counts. So I wouldn't be surprised to see more of that here. 
eventually though on the new zealand side they did adjust the way the refs were policing things to at least adjust that on the players had to adjust as well but the refs did as well too so mm. refs have got to get back into form as well anyway you guys let me know what you thought of this game it definitely wasn't a classic but um definitely good to see rugby back in uh in england pro 14 is not too far away as well so plenty more rugby to come uh and yeah you guys let me know your thoughts i'll talk to you again soon see you later